If you've ever struggled to generate AI videos, you are definitely not alone. It can be really frustrating to watch your credits disappear so quickly, especially when you're getting unusable results like this. I generated this video three times before I finally got this gorgeous result. If you want to know what I was doing wrong so you can learn from my mistakes, stick around and I'll give you a peek behind the scenes. Not only that, but I'll also share five tips for generating show-stopping, cinematic quality images that will instantly improve your video quality. First though, let's start with the basics of using frames in Kling AI. When you click on AI video from the dashboard, you should automatically go to the right place. But just in case your screen looks different than mine, you want to be in the image to video tab, and then make sure you're in the frame section. I'll choose my first image. Oh, that's actually supposed to be the end frame. So I can just hit these arrows in the center here to swap my start frame image into the end frame slot. And now I'll add an image to the start frame slot. I'm using professional mode and I only need five seconds. I always set my slider to 0.7, so a little more relevant than creative. Here's my prompt. The turtle struggles to pick her head up. The yellow goo stretches as the turtle lifts and then shakes her head. The turtle blinks sleepily and looks from side to side. And for my negative prompt, I don't want the turtle talking or walking. I honestly don't like this result, and I've never seen Kling cut the scene like this. It looks like the turtle's vomiting. Always room for another negative prompt. No vomiting. Thanks. And I really don't like how jerky all the movements are. So that probably means I asked for too much. I'll edit my prompt for clarity and simplicity. The turtle wakes up and blinks sleepily. The turtle's nostrils twitch as she sniffs the air. The turtle slowly lifts her head up. The yellow goo stretches as the turtle lifts her head. The turtle blinks sleepily and looks from side to side. And again, it's doing this weird cut in the middle. And again, we've got vomiting. For some reason, Kling thinks this is a puddle of vomit. And so it won't give me exactly what I want. I could play with the prompt a little bit more and clarify that this yellow stuff is pineapple stew, but I think in this case, I'm just going to use the first two seconds and crop out the rest. This first bit is exactly what I'm looking for, and I could always slow it down in CapCut if I want to make it a little longer. Let's try another one. I want to see if I can get this monkey to move. The monkey is pacing back and forth, trying to think of an idea. He walks from left to right and back again. The monkey is in the jungle. The monkey finally has an aha moment and gets an idea. All the other settings are the same, except this time I'm going to leave my negative prompt box empty. At least for now. That's not too bad, but there is a bit of morphing here and there. And his hand looks weird when he turns around. And in order to change the background, it made the trees and bushes seem to wiggle away from the monkey when his back was turned. That could work in another story, but not this one. I'm going to change the prompt completely to see what else I can get. The monkey is walking down a jungle path, thinking hard. The monkey is walking towards the camera in the jungle. The monkey finally has an aha moment and gets an idea. I've seen Kling do a good job with this angle, and maybe now the forest background can shift more naturally. Let's see. And strangely enough, this one seems to have done what I asked for in the last prompt. Go figure. I have no answers, but I'll take it and call it a win anyway. The background stays consistent in this video, and there's only one strange moment where his hand and arm move a little awkwardly. But as far as AI videos go, I give this one an A. Now here's something you may not have thought of. You don't have to use two images to take advantage of the end frame feature. For an image like this, we'd want to see what happened before this happened, so naturally it'd work better as an end frame image than a start frame image. By default, any image you upload is set to the start frame, but just like I did earlier, you can easily swap it. Here's my prompt. 
The leopard is sleeping when a dollop of yellow goo falls from the sky and lands on the leopard's back. The leopard wakes up. The leopard lifts her head as the yellow goo slides down her side and drips down onto the tree branch below her. The only thing is that, as of this recording, Kling 1.6 doesn't support using only one image in the end frame slot just yet, so we'll have to switch to 1.5. And I'd say that came out perfect. My only complaint is this little bit of goo here that appears before any of it falls. But it disappears too, so I could always trim off the very beginning if it really bothered me. I can't wait for Kling 1.6 to support this. So, fun fact, originally I set out to make this video all about Kling AI's new elements feature. I was so excited with the promise of adding consistent objects and consistent backgrounds to the list of AI image and video standards we can come to expect, right along with consistent characters. But after three tries, I finally gave up and used my images in the frames tab instead. And to my surprise, a nearly perfect video came out. Isn't this stunning? I was still determined to figure out how to use elements, though, so I kept trying. And as you can see, I continued to fail. And fail. Then I finally gave up and headed to Kling AI's documentation to compare their example prompts to my own. I've got a few ideas to test out now, but I wanted to talk to you first. Are you interested in learning how to use the elements feature? Let me know in the comments below. So before I let you get back to your movie making, I've got five short but punchy tips for generating cinematic quality images to level up your video creations. Tip number one, use high contrast lighting for pop. Flat lighting can make AI images look dull and lifeless. Think like a filmmaker. Add cinematic lighting prompts such as soft glow, dramatic shadows, or golden hour. Use other terms like dramatic lighting, cinematic lighting, or soft rim light to create depth and make your images pop on the screen. Tip number two is to specify depth of field for stunning scenes. Blurry backgrounds, also known as shallow depth of field, give your images a big budget film feel. Use phrases like sharp focus on subject or blurred background to create that cinematic look. Tip number three, think like a director when framing your shots. Professional cinematographers use the rule of thirds, leading lines, and dynamic angles to create stunning visuals. Try specifying low angle shot, wide angle shot, or over the shoulder view for more dynamic compositions. Tip number four, use atmospheric effects for a storybook feel. Adding elements like fog, rain, or even dust particles can make your AI images feel more immersive. Phrases like soft sunbeams or hazy golden hour help set the mood. Tip number five is to create consistent characters for, well, consistency. Sadly, even having the most stunning scenes perfectly composed with mood lighting isn't going to help you if you don't have consistent characters. Not all image generators offer an easy way to keep your characters looking consistent from image to image, which makes for some weird morphing videos if you have the audacity to give it a go like I did. Lucky for you, I've been obsessed with finding the best tools out there to do exactly that. Check out one of these videos next if you want to learn how to get your characters looking consistent. <laughs>